a number of pertinent matters on Tuesday. Details from Lisa Stewart. The Spice and Craft Vendors from Annadale Waterfall, Melville Street Mall, Grandin's Vendors Market, Fort Frederick and the Pair were briefed by Board of Tourism officials on license procedures for the new season and a review of authorized vending zones. And when the season begins, one can expect the city and beaches to be crowded with visitors. To ensure their stay in Grenada is as memorable as possible, the board wants to ensure that vendors are registered and have the adequate training. Mrs. Nikoyan Roberts is head of the product development in customer services. Every year the Grenada Board of Tourism works with service providers, whether you're a vendor, a taxi tour operator. Um, we work with the different tourism business service providers to ensure that they're licensed, they're registered, their products are, in some cases, the spice packages, for example, have to be certified, inspected and certified by the Grenada Bureau of Standards. We have to make sure that you have all the necessary documents in place so that whether you're selling a product or you're performing a service for a visitor, whether they're an international visitor or someone traveling from the region, from the Caribbean, whatever products and goods and services that we sell are competitive. They're of good quality. They're not substandard. We're trying in this way to lift the standards of the industry, to lift the image of the industry, and to ensure that the people who are operating at the end of the day, they do their businesses better and they earn more money. They're not harassing tourists. They're providing services that are quality, that are appreciated by visitors. And this is part of the whole improvement mechanism of the Grenada Board of Tourism to develop the industry. Taxi drivers are an important part of the picture since they provide the services needed for visitors to be part of the sights and songs of the country during their stay. Mrs. Roberts says they will also undergo training that says where they can vend and where they can't, what they can sell, what they should not be selling. And we help them in terms of giving them training, customer service, how you speak to people, that sort of thing. Our goal is to always improve what we're doing for any person who comes to buy a good or a service, whether they're visiting, sometimes you have local persons who, you know, you want to go down to the vendor's market, but you want to make sure that whatever you purchase in there, it's, va it's a value and that you're comfortable, you're enjoying the experience. So this, this is what we have done over the years. And uh, last week, we started working with taxi tour operators. This week, we're working with certified vendors as part of the product enhancement. I am Lisa Stewart reporting for GIS NewsHour. Thank you, Lisa. Parents who are members of the Public Workers Union are getting some help to cut costs for the new school year. On Tuesday, a ceremony was held at the union's headquarters in Tantine, St. George's, to present the recipients with their checks. Details in this report. Two students who have just started another phase of their school life at the T. Marshall Community College each received a scholarship valued at $700. For those moving on to secondary school and continuing, 29 received $250 checks under the subsistence allowance program and 16 students received $400. This year, most students were incorporated into the program and received an increase in what would have usually been disbursed. The Public Workers Union and prides itself on its ability to take care of members and their families who have been benefiting from this program for more than 10 years. Vice President Mr. Adrian Francis encouraged the students to do well and make their parents proud. Those of you getting scholarship, I must say that you have to be 40, most fortunate to, have to, to receive those scholarships anyway. And I would like you to, to, as you move to the next level, remember the journey now starts, eh? it's like a ladder you are climbing. So you're in the next thread of that ladder, at the secondary school. And I'd like you all to go out there and excel. Make us proud. Don't go out there and feel okay because I put on a, a GBSS tie or convent or a book or whatever it is, you're going to PBC, that I, I have arrived. No, the journey just start. Because what I will say to you, that we, as union, will be reviewing the scholarships, those of you who have gotten scholarship, every year to ensure that your performance is up to standard so it's not business as usual 
Not because you get a scratch for five years, you can go in there and the fact when they come first or last, we continue to pay. Sorry, if your performance does not improve, it's not improving, and it's not to the standard we expect, sorry. We will take that scholarship back. A past beneficiary of the program, Candida John, who just completed her studies at TAM CC, gave the students a word of advice moving on to higher learning institutions. You have to be disciplined. Um, secondary school, your school begins at 8 to after 2, whereas TAM CC, you have many free hours. You, you're not expected with those free hours to waste your time and gossiping with your girls and anything like that. Your free time is good, yes, but you have to use the time wisely. You have to manage your time. You have to study. Go to, you could go to the library. Uh, you could revise your work. Study for an exam. You have to be focused. You have to be focused on your goals. What you would like to be. And you have to walk towards it. One of the parents who received assistance from the Public Workers Union publicly expressed gratitude to the union for its support over the years. I would want to say thank you so much for your gift. Um, we received that scholarship and we are so grateful. We have come to depend on our union to negotiate better working conditions for us, but um, it is so much more. It's a bonus when you give us more than we even expect. So we just want to say thank you so much. You're watching the GIS News. I will be right back after the break. The Ministry of Tourism is spearheading a massive cleanup drive on Wednesday, September 1, 2010 on Grandance Beach from the area of the Coconut Beach restaurant moving northwards. The initiative is geared at reducing overgrowth in the surroundings, which is posing a security threat to both locals and visitors. The Grenada Hotel and Tourism Association, the various taxi associations, and a number of voluntary uniformed groups will be joining in on the exercise to ensure that Grenada remains the safe and secure destination it boasts about. Minister for Tourism Glennis Roberts has issued an appeal for residents, community groups and other interested persons to turn out in their numbers on Wednesday, September 1st from 7 a.m. to join in the operations dubbed the Maroon. Tourism is everybody's business and we all have our part to play. Welcome back, viewers. More than $2 million is being spent to upgrade the St. Andrew Anglican Secondary School. SAS is one of four schools being rehabilitated under the Caribbean Development Bank School Construction and Rehabilitation Project. Public Relations Officer at the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development, Wendy Chateau, has an update on the project. Two new buildings are being added to the original facility to make accommodation for technical subjects. The contract, which was awarded to Jiangsu Geology and Engineering Company, was originally scheduled for completion in July. The contract, which was awarded to Jiangsu Geology and Engineering Company, was originally scheduled for completion in July. However, a three-month extension was requested, with a new date of completion pushed back to October. Project consultant Gansham Diakaran outlines the scope of work. This project consists of the construction of two new buildings as an extension of the existing school. Um, in the two new buildings there will be five laboratories, a library and two classrooms. Um, the project had started January this year. The project duration is six months, which should have been completed in July 2010. The contractor had requested for three month extension due to heavy rainfall among other circumstances. 
Um, the anticipated completion is October of this year. Um, so far, things are things are looking well towards October. The project is said to be approximately 65% completed, with mostly finishing work outstanding. The works completed to date are all the um, structural work, included columns, floors, beams, and so on. The works remaining are the roof installation and finishing, included painting, floor finishes, handrail installation insulation of fixtures, lighting fixtures, and so on. So basically, most of the works remaining are um, finishing and um, insulation of electrical items and so on. Most of the materials are on site. Um, I think that is achievable. Um, what the contractor has to do is to re-strategize, maybe work um, longer hours, work during the weekends, and so on, because the weather is not is, is excellent at the moment. The additional facilities at SAS are being constructed at a cost of $2,816,000. I'm Wendy Chateau of the Public Relations Unit, Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development.